Hello, this is Stephen Whitfield, a drilling contractor here at the 2022 IADC SPE International Drilling Conference and Exhibition in Galveston, Texas. With me right now is Mark Willerth, Technology Development Manager at Helmerick and Payne. Mr. Willerth presented a paper uh, creatively titled 50 Ways to Leave Your Well Vore um, that sort of looked at unplanned sidetracks, the causes behind them, and sort of how industry can better understand this phenomena. So, Mark, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So, one of the things that you mentioned in your presentation was about cognitive bias, particularly optimism bias, and the role that that plays in unplanned sidetracks. I think that's something our, our viewers might be interested in hearing about. Could you sort of explain what optimism bias is and explain that relationship between that and unplanned sidetracks? Sure, sure. So, optimism bias is actually a, a collection of several biases and that affect how we think and how things might be different from us relative to others. So we often associate negative things when they happen to us as being poor luck as opposed to necessarily being a consequence of other decisions, whereas when the same negative thing happens to someone else, it's because of their decisions. You know, someone else gets in a car accident because they're a bad driver. I'm not a bad driver. My car accident was bad luck. And when it comes to sidetracks, there's a similar bias related to drilling. You know, when a different a different drilling engineer, a different contractor has a sidetrack, it's because they were not making good drilling decisions. My sidetrack was just bad luck. But the reality is, you know, there is broad competency. It's, it's similar in how we all develop these wells. And we need to be making conscious, specific decisions to prevent sidetracks because they are frequent enough to be a significant cost to our industry. And so combating that bias and making us take an honest look about is it worth it to invest in sidetrack prevention and how much do sidetracks cost is, is very important. So let's talk a little bit about the study itself. Um, you sort of looked around, tried to find out different reasons that people had for unplanned, unplanned sidetracks. Uh, could you go into that a little bit? What did you find? Sure, sure absolutely. So it, it was really more of a retroactive study. We have a remote operation center that does what's called survey management. So analyzing the wellbore positions of, of rigs that are drilling and we see a lot of rigs for a lot of different companies in a lot of areas, but some of our operations, it's important to know if you sidetrack. So starting a couple of years ago, we actually did sort of a social experiment. Just whenever they sidetracked, we asked why, and we recorded exactly what they told us. <laughs> and then for this, for this study, we went back and took a two-year time span and tried to distill what they told us into certain common buckets. And so that's where we found you know, lost in hole is very common everywhere because if you lose something in the hole, you need to sidetrack around it. But then there were also directional concerns. If you could not drill your well plan, geology concerns if you did not land in the right formation, um, and then hole quality if you actually could not keep the hole open to continue drilling. And so we tried to infer the frequency and severity of sidetracks based off of our, our survey management records. So we looked at um, the length of time between consecutive surveys if a sidetrack occurred. Because if you're drilling and you take a survey, you're going to take the next survey within an hour or two. So if you take a survey and you sidetrack and the next survey is six days later, that's the time we say you lost because you, you sidetracked. Or similarly, if, you're, if your original hole was 15,000 feet deep and you're tying on your sidetrack at 5,000 feet deep, we say that's the footage you lost. And we use that as a way of exploring just how much the industry is losing in terms of time and footage to these sidetracks. One of the other things that you studied in this, in this uh, paper was uh, sidetrack frequency by basin. You had a couple of interesting findings with that one. Could you talk a little bit about what you found there? Sure. The, the first thing that was actually, to us, the most surprising was how similar the basins were. You know, everyone feels their basin is special. They have their own unique challenges. And you know, if, you, if it works in North Dakota, it might not work in Texas, things like that. But things like Lost in Hole, directional issues, those were actually common across North America. There were two uh, specific outliers, though, which won't be as surprising for, for folks who drill those basins. One is the Bakken Shale. And there, it's well established. If you go out of your target zone in the lateral, you have a high risk of losing your bottom hole assembly in hole, having a pack off, having a stuck pipe incident. So they will proactively mitigate that by pulling back an open hole side tracking for geology if they feel like they've left the zone. So, so the Bakken had a large number of geology outliers. 
Um, and this is also because they can reduce the severity there. An open hole side track in a lateral does not take nearly as long as coming out of hole, fishing for two days, setting a cement plug, um, and, and that type of thing. The other outlier we saw was in the DJ Basin in Colorado, where at least the operators who we work with have reached a very efficient factory drilling scenario. They are punching out holes in less than a week, and, and those were not seeing the same types of problems that we saw in some of the other basins, or at least not the same frequency that we saw in some of the other basins. So this paper was about as much about understanding the causes of unplanned sidetracks. So now that we have this understanding of unplanned sidetracks, what, what do we do with that information? What do we do to sort of combat some of these problems that, that you cited here? Sure, absolutely. That's, we, we think it, having a baseline in terms of the cost and severity and frequency for sidetracks helps justify that investment. The, the way we think of it is, the fact that one out of every 15 well bores you're drilling sidetracks means you're paying a sidetrack tax every time you run in a hole. There's a, you'd have to put a small percentage of every successful well bore aside to cover the sidetrack. If you know how frequent it is, though, then you can justify if you want to spend a little more money to make sure your directional assembly gets there correctly, spend a little more money to make sure your geology is correct. You know if that has paid off by looking at those results you're going to get. If you only sidetrack one out of every 50 wells instead of one of every 15, you can say this is what we've saved because we've separated ourselves from this established baseline that is known to be common. Well, Mark, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us about your paper. This is definitely a phenomenon that uh, is of great interest in the industry, and it'll be interesting to see what more gets done here. Thank you so much. Just thank you so much for having me. It's been great to talk about it. And thank you for visiting Drilling Contractor.